Holy and whole, divine feminine as a healing force. My choir is rehearsing the Bach Magnificat. Mornings I awake to a musical phrase. It courses my heart. It emerges through my voice. My soul magnifies the divine. It carries me through. One morning, my love kisses me goodbye and says, your face is open-hearted and joyous. I'm suddenly worried how to recreate that joy. And if I can't, will he leave? A period of sleeplessness, fear, someone could hurt me at night. Why does this come up now? Because I was molested at night. I cry out for someone to help me. A woman, large, naked, fierce, eyes of delight, comes to me. She is like the Venus of Willendorf. I fall into her body, letting her hold me. I name her Molly Elizabeth. She says to me, love your body, love life, be powerful. During meditation, Mali Elizabeth becomes Avalokiteshvara, whose name means the one who hears our suffering, the compassionate one who fiercely protects me. She gives me a prayer, Avalokita, hold me, that I may trust and heal the wounds, that I might live, that my heart may be open and joyous that I may become Avalokita. In New Mexico, the entrance to a Zen center is graced by Mary, Our Lady of Guadalupe, and Avalokiteshvara. The two together gave me a way to honor two different Divine Mothers. In Mexico, a shrine to Our Lady of Guadalupe is built atop an ancient shrine to Tonantzin, Aztec goddess, whose name means Great Mother. Ancient mothers throughout all generations, they give me hope. Tonantzin, in one of her forms, called Kuatala Sobeu, means Our Lady who emerges from the region of light like the eagle from fire. She reminds me of Molly Elizabeth. Ah, knitting together, Mary, prophet of the Magnificat, Molly Elizabeth, Avalokita, Mary, Lady of Guadalupe, and Tonantzin, my divine ladies, Mary and her Magnificat singing in my heart now at the forefront. They carry me through. My choir finishes performing the Magnificat and it still sings inside.
A line from Bach wakens me. All, all generations. I recall my own maternal lineage. My mother, Margie, on the ground, holding on to the dog. My grandmother, Mary Pearl, standing at left. My great-grandmother, Anna, seated at left. My great-great-grandmother, Mary, not pictured. Survived by her husband, Hector, seated at right. I come from a long line of wounded mothering. My mother, Marjorie Ann. As a child, she'd be isolated for months with scarlet fever. To calm her wounds, she retreated to books and to fantasies. What was inside that wall, reinforcing her inner world? What did she never let out? I felt that wall, but had no words to voice it. She voiced it. Two decades after she died, I found a poem she'd written to Connie, age eight. Why do I put you off, my sweet? Your dear face turns to entreat. In the midst of my day, I recall you saw impatience, a blank wall. Too late might I assure and hold the moment passes to unfold. A day of schedule robs my child. She turns unsure to other loves. My grandmother, Mary Pearl, she buried her joy and gritted her teeth and furrowed her brow. She endured her life with an alcoholic, abusive father and an unapproachable mother. And later, a workaholic husband, rarely at home. When she was angry, Pearl would not speak to her daughter Margie for days. What wounds were under that silent, frowning face with tightly pursed lips? My great-grandmother, Anna. She left school at age 12 to care for her family when her mother died. She married a mean alcoholic. She didn't celebrate Christmas or buy toys for her children. My mother Margie said that Anna was hard to think of as her grandmother. I noticed my mother's stiff hands and Anna's large working hands. What wounds did Anna have to wall off when she was 12? My great great grandmother Mary. I don't have a picture of her. What kind of life did she have? She didn't live near her people. She birthed seven children and then died at age 30 after giving birth to twins. These are the mothers who came before me. I work on my own healing, the only thing I can do. At a creative arts day, I draw this picture and write, in a hole, dark, not much color, scarf is black around neck. Spring out of hole, shock, surprise, lots of movement up. Bright scarf is like wings. Lined, eyes covered by scarf, halting steps. Scarf trails behind, accompanies. Sitting on chair, neutral, scarf is around neck. The divine feminine is dark, receptive, not necessarily clear, operates in the realm of not knowing. Can she heal me? Omnis, omnis, generationis, can my divine mothers lend strength, wisdom, and compassion to heal my maternal line? Through them, I can see my foremother's gifts and blessings. I return to their stories. My great-great-grandmother is Mary, and these are her gifts and blessings. She must have been strong to birth seven children, leaving the comfort of her people, probably from Ireland, when she forged a new life with her husband. 
My great-grandmother is Anna, and these are her gifts and blessings. She was strong, able to provide for herself, and kept her family going after her mother died. She learned trades normally done by men and built her own house. She left a bad marriage and made a better one. My grandmother is Pearl, and these are her gifts and blessings. She had a spark of life in this picture. Perhaps it stayed with her somewhere. She was first in her family to go to college. Later, she was a good money manager and sewed all her children's clothes and her granddaughter's doll clothes. Pearl helped provide for her grandchildren to go to camp, buy good winter coats, have toys, and go to college without debt. My mother is Margie, and these are her gifts and blessings. She loved reading stories to us, singing and acting them out. In her career, she was a gifted English teacher and mentor to the debate team. She wrote her own poetry and cared for us when we were sick. I am Connie, and these are my gifts and blessings. I am a seeker, journeyer, mystic, musician, learning from being in community. I am supported by ancestors, where I meet my foremothers, the spirit world, where I meet Molly Elizabeth, Zen, where I meet Avalokiteshvara, followers of Jesus, where I meet Mary, and 12-step recovery, where I meet myself. And the caravan is also going forward. My daughter is Addie. She is a graphic novel creator and artist, an amazing gamer. Addie was adopted when she was two days old and is a compassionate friend. She designed the cover page to this story. After my family recollections, I draw this picture and write, Deep forces from below ground are creating tension and pain at the surface. When tapped, a rainbow of experience and effervescence of silvery energy and light emerges. The picture says to me, I am a dynamic force. It may be scary, but if you allow it, amazing things will transpire. It looks like a colorful feminine dress. Perhaps I will put it on and dance with Mary, Molly Elizabeth, Avalakita, Our Lady, and Tonansen. The divine feminine is a dancing, effervescent force where I become my ancestors and my divine foremothers.